हेलो स्टूडेंट्स वेलकम बैक इन दिस वीडियो सेशन ऑफ फार्मास्यूटिकल ऑर्गेनिक केमिस्ट्री वन प्रैक्टिकल्स नाउ इन टुडेज वीडियो सेशन वी विल बी डिस्कसिंग एंड डिटर्मिनेशन ऑफ बॉइलिंग पॉइंट ऑफ गिवन ऑर्गेनिक सैम्पल सो दिस वीडियो इज अ पार्ट ऑफ सिस्टमेटिक क्वालिटेटिव एनालिसिस ऑफ अनोन ऑर्गेनिक कंपाउंड्स सो वी हैव डिस्कस्ड इन दी अर्लियर सेशंस अबाउट द वेरियस प्रिलिमिनरी टेस्ट विच वी कैन यूज or try on the given unknown organic sample then we have seen how we can find out the auxiliary elements in the given compound then we can perform the solubility test and we can categorize our compound into a particular group then we can perform a series of functional group test where we can find out which are the functionalities present in the given sample and then we can determine the physical constant of the sample so if our sample is solid we can find out the melting point if our sample is liquid we can go for the boiling point determination so in the previous video i have already discussed about the determination of melting point of given sample so in this video we will be mainly focusing about how we can find out the boiling point of given sample which is in the liquid form we will discuss about the theoretical aspect of the boiling point what are the factors which affect the boiling point and we will see the experimental setup by using the thiel's tube then we have also seen we can prepare a derivative if we are not able to identify the compound in a proper way okay so this is about the flow chart we have already aware of now we will see the today's experiment so the aim of experiment here is to determine the boiling point of a given organic compound so this given organic compound will be in a liquid form so what is the boiling point okay you might have aware about what is the boiling point of a given liquid so in simple words it is a temperature at which the vapor pressure of the liquid is equal to the atmospheric pressure exerted upon the liquid surface in simple words we can see what is boiling point it is the temperature at which liquid will change into the vapor form or the gaseous form so the boiling point of liquid depends on mainly the environmental pressure that is surrounding that liquid okay so this point is very important and we should emphasize the environmental pressure which is surrounding to that liquid whose boiling point we want to find out so what does it means it means if the liquid is in partial vacuum it would have the lower boiling point than the same liquid in the atmospheric pressure okay so for example if you are determining the boiling point of any compound at the atmospheric pressure it will give its actual or the characteristic boiling point but if you are exerting some pressure or if you are reducing the pressure then it will give or show a different boiling point than its actual boiling point okay so to understand this we will take one simple example you know the boiling point of water so the water will boil at 101 degree celsius which is a characteristic boiling point for the water and this 101 degree celsius boiling point is seen when we are recording this boiling point at the atmospheric pressure okay so at normal atmospheric pressure we will find the water will start boiling at 101 degree celsius okay so usually at the sea level okay we can find it is usually at 101 degree celsius but if you take the same water at the higher altitude so let's say if i am taking the same water around 2000 meters higher altitude than the sea face what will happen the same water now will start boiling early and the boiling point will be 93 degree celsius so why this has happened because at the higher altitude the atmospheric pressure is different okay it is usually at reduced pressure so when you uh, do the boiling of any particular liquid at the reduced pressure 
the boiling point of that liquid will be lower than the actual vice versa if you remove the vacuum that means if you are exerting the higher pressure on the liquid okay if the atmospheric pressure is higher than the normal then it will take more temperature to boil than the actual boiling point okay so hope you got this uh, concept what is boiling point and how it will be affecting with respect to the atmospheric pressure now different liquids will boil at different temperatures at a given pressure and because of this we can consider the boiling point as the physical constant for a particular sample and this is the reason why we are using this as a characteristic point or as a characteristic temperature which will actually help us to identify what could be the given sample okay let's say if the water is given to you as an unknown liquid so you can easily find out the boiling point of the given sample so it will definitely start boiling somewhere around 100 degree celsius okay so by looking at the experimental boiling point and comparing with that of the literature boiling point we can get the identity of the given liquid okay so in a literature we have a characteristic boiling point for the liquid samples which are very commonly found in the nature and this we can use it as a qualitative test or the identification test for identifying the unknown substances now boiling point of a substance will indicate the volatility of the substance so what does it means if any substance have the lower boiling point that means it is getting evaporated very easily after heating then we can say these are the substances which are highly volatile especially you can see the volatile oils or essential oils then uh, we have the uh, petroleum liquids or products then even you can see the ethers diethyl ether they have usually very uh, low boiling point because they are volatile so they can easily get evaporated at a particular temperature on the other hand there are some liquids which require higher temperature to convert them into a vapors so that means they are referred as the substances having higher boiling point so they are non volatile in nature for example water so water will start boiling only after 100 degrees celsius so before that it will not evaporate it will not change its liquid state another example we can take we have seen in case of melting point determination which liquid we have taken in the thiols tube can you comment in the comment box do you remember yes exactly so we have taken the liquid paraffin so do you know why liquid paraffin is taken in the thiol tube for determination of melting point or even the boiling point so this question can be asked in the viva or in the mcqs the reason behind taking liquid paraffin in the thiol tube yes can you comment or can you guess your answer in the comment box okay all right so the reason behind taking liquid paraffin is it has the high boiling point so we know the liquid paraffin is having higher boiling point somewhere around 370 degree celsius okay so whatever samples we are taking so most of these samples have melting point and the boiling point lower than the boiling point of the liquid paraffin okay so that is the reason liquid paraffin is taken it is uh, very cheap and easily available in nature so we can make use of that in the thiol tube for determination of boiling point and melting point okay so liquid paraffin is a non volatile whereas the petroleum substances or the ether uh, these are the volatile in nature okay so there are various factors on which the boiling point of a particular sample is depend so the first factor is the strength of the intermolecular forces so the intermolecular forces are 
the forces operating in between the molecules that's why they are referred as intermolecular forces okay so the strength of these intermolecular forces will have a great effect on the boiling point so the relative strength of the intermolecular forces they affect the boiling point of the compound so what are these intermolecular forces they are quite similar as that what we have discussed in the melting point ionic interaction will have a very higher relative strength than the hydrogen bonding than the dipole dipole than the van der waal uh, dispersive forces so this is the order of their strength so we can see in case of van der waal forces it is very weak forces compared to the dipole compared to the hydrogen and the ionic relative strength uh, is the is the uh, highest uh, relative strength of the intermolecular forces okay so how they will affect so these will influence the boiling point of your liquid sample and the influence of these forces depends on the functionality that particular structure or the sample has okay so we will try to understand by taking suitable example strength of the intermolecular forces so you can see here in case of n butane okay so n butane is a hydrocarbon chain consisting four carbon atoms and the molecular weight of that is 58.12 now here there are no other functionality simply a carbon carbon single bond so it is a alkene so no other forces are operating other than the van der waal uh, dispersive force okay so van der waal dispersive force as we have mentioned in the earlier side they are quite weak okay so because of that the boiling point of n butane is minus 1 to 1 degree celsius all right now as you move from n butane to diethyl ether okay so here you can see there is a hetero atom so there is a carbon and oxygen so because of this you know oxygen is electronegative it will have a delta minus and the carbon relative to the oxygen it will carry the delta positive charge so there will be a dipole dipole interaction between this atoms and because of that the diethyl ether will have a dipole dipole intermolecular forces because of this the diethyl ether boils at 35 degree celsius so you can imagine by changing the butane into a diethyl ether by introducing one oxygen right the boiling point has changed tremendously from minus 1 it is now become uh, 35 degree okay so again when you go from diethyl ether to n butanol where we have the uh, hydroxy group oh group is attached here okay so here the hydrogen bonding will come into picture so hydrogen bonding is relatively stronger than the dipole dipole interaction and because of that in n butanol we find it boils at higher temperature than that of the diethyl ether and butane so here the boiling point of n butanol is 117 degree celsius then when we see the ionic interaction in case of sodium n butoxide so there is a o minus n na plus so it has a opposite charge attraction and this uh, this results in the uh, ionic interaction so ionic interaction is the strongest among these uh, intermolecular forces and because of that sodium n butoxide boils at even higher than 260 degree celsius so this is how the strength of intermolecular forces is playing an important role in deciding the boiling point of your sample okay so this is the first factor second factor is the length of carbon carbon chain okay so as the number of carbon atoms increases that means the length of the carbon carbon chain is also increases and this will usually results in increase in the boiling point okay so lengthier the molecule lengthier the hydrocarbon chain higher the boiling point of that particular substance so why this happens this is mainly because of the force of attraction between the molecules is going to increase okay and because of this the molecule gets longer and it has more electrons in the structure because of the more electrons okay it 
रिक्वायर हायर टेम्परेचर टू कन्वर्ट फ्रॉम लिक्विड फेज टू द वेपर फेज इट टेक्स मोर एनर्जी टू ओवरकम दीज फोर्सेस ऑफ अट्रैक्शन एंड देन बॉइलिंग पॉइंट विल बी एक्सटेंडेड राइट सो हियर वी कैन टेक सम एग्जाम्पल्स एंड वी कैन ट्राई टू अंडरस्टैंड सो हियर यू कैन सी इट इज़ अ प्रोपेन ओके दिस प्रोपेन हैज अ बॉइलिंग पॉइंट ऑफ माइनस फोर्टी टू डिग्री सेल्सियस ओके सो इट इज़ वेरी लेस बॉइलिंग पॉइंट इट इज हाईली वॉलाटाइल इन नेचर सो वेन यू शिफ्ट फ्रॉम अल्केन टू ऑल्कोहोल्स ओके सो हियर यू कैन सी इन केस ऑफ ऑल्कोहोल्स इट इज वन टू एंड थ्री सो दिस इज प्रोपेनॉल सो इन केस ऑफ प्रोपेनॉल इट इज बॉइलिंग एट नाइंटी सेवन डिग्री सेल्सियस सो वेन यू इंक्रीज वन मोर कार्बन चेन हियर सो फ्रॉम प्रोपेनॉल इफ यू कन्वर्ट इट इन टू अ ब्यूटेनॉल यू कैन सी द बॉइलिंग पॉइंट हैज शिफ्टेड फ्रॉम नाइंटी सेवन टू हंड्रेड एंड एटीन सिमिलरली इन केस ऑफ अल्केन्स हियर इट वॉज माइनस फोर्टी टू इट बिकम माइनस वन डिग्री एंड फ्रॉम शिफ्टिंग फ्रॉम हियर टू हियर ओके दैट मीन्स वन टू थ्री फोर एंड फाइव सो दिस इज पेंटेन दिस इज ब्यूटेन सो फ्रॉम ब्यूटेन टू पेंटेन वन कार्बन चेन हैज बीन इंक्रीज एंड दैट हैज रिजल्टेड इन टू अ हायर बॉइलिंग पॉइंट ओके सो यू कैन सी हाउ द बॉइलिंग पॉइंट इज चेंजिंग फ्रॉम माइनस फोर्टी टू माइनस वन देन थर्टी सिक्स टू सिक्सटी नाइन डिग्री सेल्सियस सो हियर वॉट वी आर ऑब्जर्विंग वी आर इंक्रीजिंग द कार्बन चेन लेंथ द हाइड्रोकार्बन चेन हैज बीन इंक्रीज सो लेंदियर द मॉलिक्यूल will be the boiling point of that particular substance same what we have observed in alcohols okay similarly we can observe in the carboxylic acid okay so here you can see it is 1 2 and 3 so it is a propanoic acid so from going from propanoic to butanoic from from butanoic to pentanoic then from pentanoic to hexanoic what we are observing the carbon chain length is increased and because of that the boiling point is also increasing from 141 to 164 164 to 186 and so on same thing we can observe in ethers also okay so what we want to say here or emphasize here the length of the carbon chain is also a deciding factor to decide or to affect the boiling point of the samples then the third factor is branching okay we have seen in organic chemistry even when we have discussed the nomenclature we have seen lots of examples where they are not the straight chain compounds there is some branching some substituent present in the compound the surface area higher will be the boiling point what we want to say here whenever you find there is a branching and because of the branching the surface area will be reduced so those molecules which doesn't have the branching obviously their boiling point will be comparatively higher than that of the branched molecule so we can summarize here the length of the carbon chain increases it will increase the surface area because of the surface area it will have a strong van der waal uh, interactive forces and because of that it will increase the ability of individual molecule to attract each other and this will definitely result in higher boiling point okay so we can see a simplest example in case of n pentane that is a straight chain compound carrying five carbon atoms when you compare n pentane with that of the neopentane okay so pentane and neopentane so these are the isomers of each other now in this case in case of pentane because it is a straight chain it doesn't have any branching it is providing a higher surface area so because of the higher surface area what we can observe here it will have a strong van der waal interaction or the forces and it require higher temperature to evaporate so pentane has a boiling point of 36 degree celsius whereas neopentane has the boiling point of just 9 degree celsius so in neopentane what we can see there is a branching and because of the branching the surface area what it is uh, having is very less so we can easily make out the difference when the surface area is higher and surface area is lower so it depends on the branching so in short branching in molecule will decrease the surface area 
and ultimately it will reduce the boiling point of the substance then the final factor which affect the boiling point is the polarity so polarity of the molecule determines the force of attraction between the molecules in the liquid state so what we can say greater the polarity higher the boiling point and that is the reason we can see uh, the solvents what we are using in organic chemistry or pharmaceutical uh, chemistry the polar solvents will have higher boiling point than the non polar non polar solvents are volatile in nature whereas polar solvents are non volatile in nature for example we can have a list of solvents benzyl alcohol so because of the alcohol functionality is relatively polar okay so it will have a boiling point of 205 similarly you can see the glycerol again there is a polar functionality it boils at 290 degrees celsius on the other hand when you see the chlorobenzene so chlorobenzene doesn't have any polar functionality it has a benzene ring and chlorine atom okay so because of that it is highly lipophilic and it is non polar so the boiling point has been reduced it becomes 132 degrees celsius okay so these are the some solvents okay and based on their polarity their boiling point is uh, decided okay so polarity is one of the major factor which affect the boiling point of the substances now i hope you have understood the fundamentals of boiling point what is boiling point uh, why it is important how we can utilize in our qualitative analysis and finally the factors affecting the boiling point now we can perform this experiment in the laboratory so to perform this experiment we require a thermometer we require a stand which can hold the thermometer with the fusion tube we require a capillary then uh, we require a thread then bunsen burner then you require a liquid paraffin and most importantly here you require a sodium fusion tube okay if you remember we have not used the sodium fusion tube in the melting point determination because the solid sample was directly inserted in the capillary tube so here we have to insert our liquid sample into the sodium fusion tube or it is simply referred as a fusion tube some people refer it as a ignition tube and uh, it is also referred as the durham tube all right so these are the requirements now we will see the experimental setup so what you require first you have to take a clean fusion tube in this fusion tube you have to transfer your liquid sample whose boiling point you want to find out so usually a 0.5 ml or 1 ml of liquid sample is more than sufficient by this thiels tube method so the liquid sample you have to pour in this fusion tube and then what you have to do you have to tie this fusion tube to the thermometer so you have to tie this tube exactly in the same way what you have done for the melting point determination so the lower end of the thermometer should match with the fusion tube okay so as indicated in this figure you have to uh, tie the sodium fusion tube with that of the thermometer you can use either thread or you can use the uh, rubber then you have to take a capillary okay then exactly the same way what we have done in melting point we have to seal one end of the capillary okay so you can take a capillary and just put on the burner so the uh, one end of the capillary tube will be closed or it will be sealed by the heating then you have to dip this sealed capillary which has been sealed from one end in such a way that the end sealed end of the capillary will be on the top side okay so the open end of the capillary is dipped in the liquid sample whose boiling point you are going to determine so this is very important setup if you do some mistake in this setup your experiment is gone okay you will not able to get the characteristic boiling point of that substance okay so you should be very careful in this then what you have to do you have to take a liquid paraffin in the thiels tube and attach the thiels tube to a stand exactly again the same way what we have done in the melting point okay and then you can 
hang or place the thermometer carrying the fusion tube and the capillary which is dipped in the fusion tube in the mentioned way then your experiment will start so what you have to do you have to switch on the bunsen burner and you have to heat the thais tube slowly on the flame make sure that the liquid paraffin in the thais tube is circulating continuously so that it will get a uniform temperature to the liquid now you have to be very uh, cautious and observe carefully you have to note the temperature t1 at which continuous stream of air bubbles appear from the end of the capillary tube remember i have told you you have dipped a capillary which is sealed from one end and that sealed end is on the top and the open end is dipped in the sodium fusion tube containing a liquid so when you gradually heat the thais tube okay what will happen the temperature will be provided to the liquid sample then at a particular point you will observe from the lower end of the capillary tube bubbling will start okay the bubbles will start coming so this temperature we should refer as t1 okay you have to note down this temperature when continuous bubbles are appearing this is very important continuous stream of air bubble initially you may find some one or two bubbles are coming after uh, you start heating but don't consider that as a t1 when you see when you observe a continuous stream of air bubble that will be referred as t1 then once you observe a continuous stream of air bubbles coming out of the capillary tube then immediately switch off the bunsen burner okay and note the temperature t2 at which the air bubble from the capillary end is going to disappear okay so when the air bubbles are disappeared you have to note down the temperature so you have two temperatures one as t1 other as t2 all right then you have to report the values in the observation table which i am going to show you in the next slide and then you can calculate the mean okay so this is the observation table what you have to make in your journal so first is t1 when you observe a rapid and continuous evolution of gas bubbles and the second is when the evolution of gas bubbles just stops after removing the flame or switching of the bunsen burner so you will have a t1 and t2 then you can get the mean or average of this t1 and t2 by dividing by 2 okay so that is the actual experimental boiling point of the given or taken liquid sample okay all right so you can finally report your result the boiling point of given organic compound was found to be whatever degree celsius you got as the average temperature okay so this is how you can perform the determination of boiling point of a given liquid sample and this is very important and very easy technique which you can use it for identifying the substance okay you can also distinguish between volatile and non volatile sample by recording the boiling point now as even i told you for melting point determination even boiling point determination is also looks easy but you have to do it very carefully and you have to utilize your skills so that you will get the accurate boiling point so first important tip or the precaution is you have to keep the lower end of the fusion tube and the thermometer bulb at the same level okay this is very important and this will slightly change your reading if you no, do not follow this second you have to seal the capillary tube properly okay because the sealed capillary is an important properly sealed capillary if the capillary is not properly sealed then it will give the false results so you can easily make out if on placing the sealed capillary tube in a test tube the liquid is seen rising in the capillary tube that is very obvious if the capillary tube is not sealed then what will happen you will find the liquid rising in the capillary tube because of the capillary action 
and this will indicate there is something wrong in sealing of the capillary tube so you can discard that and you can use the fresh capillary tube which has been sealed properly then third point the seal point of the capillary tube should be well within the liquid okay ensure that the capillary tube is well within the liquid whose boiling point you want to determine then thiol's tube should be heated very slowly okay so provide the heating gradually don't heat the thiol's tube containing liquid paraffin very vigorously okay otherwise you will miss out the actual temperature and finally as i mentioned earlier liquid paraffin you have to store it properly and make sure that it does not have any water droplets if it has any water droplets what will happen when you are heating the thiol's tube the water will boil so if your sample under investigation has higher than 110 degree celsius boiling point then what will happen the impurities as water will boil and if you provide higher temperature the water will try to bump out and it may cause some accidents okay so be careful while performing the experiments and you have to follow all these uh, precautions and tips so that you can get the accurate results okay so these are the references from which this presentation has been prepared i hope you have understood the determination of boiling point theoretical aspects and experimental setup in this video thank you for watching this video